I would like to ask a question regarding the previous part of the study that we discussed. Um, Sunniti being the Sikhs guru of Guru Maharaj, and it says in the purports of verse 32, according to Shastric injunctions, there is no difference between Sikh guru and Diksha guru. At the end of the day, Sikh guru later on becomes the Diksha guru. Sunniti, however, being a woman, and specifically his mother, could not become the guru of Guru Maharaj, Diksha guru. So why is that? Why is which? Why is it that, that she cannot become the Diksha guru? Okay. See, because you, <coughs> you're dealing with the, the Diksha Guru is a formal relationship. Siksha doesn't have that formality. So since the feminine nature, you're dealing with the sense of possession, then it fits with Siksha Guru but not with Diksha Guru. Because even though you one would think it's the other way, the problem is it's because the of the sense of possession, then you expect them to do everything how you say based on your emotions, not based on your instruction. You know what I'm saying? The mother may be giving good instruction or not, or know what instruction to give or not, but she expects her child to behave in a particular way because they're her child. You understand? So you can't have that in a diksha relationship. The point is, is it's based on siksha, but it's formalized that that instruction has to be followed. But what's happening here, it's not about the instruction. One could say, no, it's about the instruction. No, but then it's about them following the instruction. You understand? So that feminine aspect will come into it, and it's just not supposed to be there. Because then it turns something spiritual into, into this, this whole emotional thing and the control and the... They don't care, and you know what I'm saying? So that's the whole thing. So that can be applied onto the husband, onto the family members, onto the children, you know, onto your house, onto your, you know, community. But you can't do that on this spiritual platform. So that's why then women don't become diksha groups. That's, that's the basic reason. You know, I mean, then there's so many details behind that just the strength required to do it and a woman who only who's protected can really do that you know so the point is is a woman gets her strength when she's in a protected environment she becomes very strong very out, you know powerful outgoing in that and if that's lacking she becomes weak so when she becomes weak to protect herself then she becomes nasty and so then if you combine that with the need that that then her identity is based on that, and if you don't follow what she says, you doubt it, then it, it, it puts into question her position, her existence, her identity as the Diksha Guru. And so that's going to create so much mental turmoil, and it'll be about her. So that's the whole point. When it's the Diksha Guru, it's about what works for the, the disciple. But if the woman is the, is the Guru, because of the sense of possession, it's always about her. So it's just opposite, it's just incompatible. Now as the Siksha Guru can work, why is that? Because the Siksha doesn't have that sense of possession. So if they follow or not follow, it's one of those, they follow, you have a good relation, you don't follow, then hey, what to do? You know, it's like the grandparents, they tell you some good, they'll, they'll always tell you good advice, right? And you take it, great. If you don't, it's kind of like, hey, it's my child's problem, not my problem. Right? Because they're the, they're the child of their child. So if, they, if, if they're going off in the wrong direction, that's their child's business to take care of. They're just trying to help. So that's why then the Siksha position is the strongest. So that's why in the Vedas. So the difficulty is, is in the contemporary environment is due to the neophyte mentality, there isn't a proper respect for Siksha Guru. Because to have respect for Siksha Guru means you have to have respect for the principle of authority and that knowledge is the highest. Does that make sense? But in an environment where authority issues is basically kind of standard and accepted as that's normal, and if you accept authority, there's something wrong with you or you're sentimental, right? And then on top of that, when you add into it the contemporary uh, social values from the platform of Pranamoy, you know, from Arta, that uh, these things are of importance then you can see is that that undermines the whole position of what Siksha Guru represents and what needs to be there. So 
the neophyte mentality, especially when it has the aspect of the, the contempt, modern contemporary uh, pranamoy values, then you can't establish siksha gurus. So only diksha, because then there's seeming the diksha is like, you know, then it's like a, you know, there's a ritual, so there's that, that formal external relationship. Because siksha guru is based not on external, it's based on the, the more the subtle, it's on the knowledge, on the metaphysical. Right, but the diksha then the neophyte uh, uh, takes it that it's based on the the external. You know, it's just like if you have any kind of ritual. There's a there's a connection there, and by the external, when you have a marriage, you're connecting the external. Right, you're not connecting the souls. They're just agreeing to work together. Right, it's the, it's the external you're connecting. So then that makes it that one makes it strong for the neophyte. But two makes it weak for them to go beyond that and understand the position of Siksha Guru. Because if Siksha Guru is respected, that means all senior Vaishnavas, and especially those who are more close that are giving instructions, would be on that same platform like the Diksha Guru. Right? Then you wouldn't have a need for trying to bring out this thing based on social values. It's not based on spiritual values. No one should. No one should fool themselves on this. It's based purely on social values, modern social values, that the women should be diksha gurus. You know what I'm saying? But the point is, is right here, Prabhupada's saying it, and he says according to Shastra. So that's just the way it is. You know what I'm saying? But diksha guru is the highest and the formal, but that's within Pancharatra. But higher than Pancharatra is Bhagavad, and Bhagavad just functions on Siksha. You understand? So that's the whole thing is we have, we, we turn everything upside down to the mode of ignorance. So actually someone being a Siksha Guru based on the Bhagavad principles is technically a higher position, but by formality then they're not. Right? In the formal environment, they're not. So you have to be able to balance these things, and balance is not one of the fortes of contemporary society. It just doesn't know how, because it doesn't know what the elements are. It needs to balance. You have to know you have to know what your hands are and you have to know what those funny little balls or whatever it is that you're 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 juggling. You know, and you have to know the rhythm, you have to know all those different things and, and, and it's you know what I'm saying? So you have to know, but the problem is is you can't even define these things. So then how do you get people People don't even know what is addiction, Siksha Guru, and how it fits in the formula, what it means, what's the technical points of initiation, what's the masculine fi prim principle, feminine principle, Bhagavad, Pancharatric, Vedic, how their relationships, all those things. If you can define that, then you can discuss balance. But what we're dealing with is it's thrown out of balance because you're, you're taking a modern social phenomena and trying to make that as a spiritual you know, how you say, vanguard, when it actually is not. It's just a social, you know, some, it's a social issue so that people have enough bile to digest lunch, you know. That's basically what its benefit is. You know what I'm saying? So, that's the thing is that the, the Diksha Guru is, is just not recommended. You can say, no, but there's some examples and lines in history, but who cares if Prabhupada says it's not, and he says, quoting from Shastra. Who cares? Because if I say, let's say there's another uh, uh, modern issue that I have examples from history, right? And, uh, if, uh, and it goes against that modern principle, then what will be the point? Well, Prabhupada doesn't talk about it, so we don't we, we don't accept it. But if Prabhupada does talk about it, and you find an example to oppose it, and it supports the modern, then it's something to discuss. So this is politics. This is not this is not philosophy. This is not spiritual. It's just downright. You can say equal opportunities. And but what does this mean? You know. You know what I'm saying? That, that's the difficulty. Is that. These aren't defined, and if you try to push the issue, then you just get emotional blow-ups, which is how a woman deals with these things. Right? In other words, if a woman wants something, but if she knows it's logically wrong, as, as soon as you start to logically approach it, then she immediately just becomes angry and stops talking and stuff like that. That's the natural defense. 
you know, crying this and that. You know, she just brings it back to her. So then you have to drop it. Oh, 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 no, 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 <laughs> like that. That's just the way it works. And so, and we're going to accept that that's how we're going to deal with such an important philosophical point that Shastra doesn't put. That's why Shastra doesn't support it. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. You know? And people may say this and that, and we're not this body and so many things. Yes, we're not the body, but the problem is, is that the body is the body. We have to understand that. I'm not the body, but the body is the body. And it has a nature and it functions according to that nature. No ifs, no ands, and no buts. You know what I'm saying? It's like the car is sitting there and it's a car. But when I get in it, I'm the soul. I'm, I'm, I'm separate from the car. Now the car can do anything. How does that work? You know? It's only a car if I'm not in the car. But when I get in the car, now it can be anything. The sky is the limit, you know? Uh, what do you mean? It's still a car. So whether there's a soul in the body or a soul not in the body, whether the soul is identified with the body or the soul is not identified with the body, the body is still the body. It's just, it's just straightforward, logical facts. And so it's not about that there's a problem here. It's a, pro it's a point is, why put women into a position that's unfavorable for them as women? Because say what you want, that sense of possession is going to come up. It doesn't matter who says or what says. And if you say, because the Shastra says one's liberated, then you could do such a thing. But a liberated woman, as pointed out by Vishnu, not in that context, but he's saying, he's saying about Varnashram and about how the devotee in the stages of Kanishta and Madhyama engages this conditioning in Krishna's service. Right? But then when he gets to the Uttama platform, he technically doesn't have to. But he still will because... What, what reason is there for not to? Right? It's not a matter of prestige. Arjuna being a liberated soul and eternal associate of the Lord is not, is not worried, oh, well, you know, Brahman's better. You know, that, that's for uh, Vishwamitra. Right? He does that. It's not for um, the devotees. So when they get to the Uttama platform, they don't have to, but they do to set examples. So therefore, it still doesn't change. So that's the whole point, is the system is there because that's how Krishna likes it. You know, that's how Krishna likes the culture to work because then that particular, you know, closeness and everything can be there. And that closeness is specific because if, the clo if that attachment goes everywhere, what's the speciality? Because the attachment is focused, that has meaning. So this thing where you put the woman out on the street and her attachment goes out to all, and her sense of possession goes out to all, what, what's special about that? And two, what is it that you're getting that, that that sense of possession has a meaning? Because the sense of possession is, is at, means is as much control as you can get so then, what is it that the woman is doing to deserve that? You understand? These things go both ways. I generally don't talk this way, because men take advantage of it. But the point is, is, is just like if the man is not putting out and really putting in his effort, why, why does he deserve that reciprocation of the woman? What's he doing to actually, that she's impressed that his, that his, his, Commitment to the relationship is strong enough to warrant that kind of surrender and kind of service and interaction, and that she makes the effort to smile. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So the same way it goes the other way. That sense of, of, of possession, that the woman can feel it's her right to have that sense of possession. What is she doing? for someone else that is there. She, I'm the Diksha Guru, but it's going to go for more than Diksha Guru. Everybody's going to feel the brunt of it. The temple president especially, because it's her disciples that are in the temple, and things have to go the way she wants, because she's the Guru. You know, it's like the, the, uh, the, the zone lacharyas of the 80s are, are kid stuff compared to a woman being a Guru. Because the others don't 